Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I, I got uh, peer pressured into doing this video. <laughs> my buddy was like, do a video! I was like, I'm out of ideas. Then he started just throwing random stuff at me. I was like, I don't understand the retail side of comics that much. Like, I can't really talk. And then finally, somebody else sent me uh, some screenshots from Peter uh, Sametti taking C.B. Sobolski to the woodshed. So I was like, oh, I do understand taking people to the woodshed. So uh, first of all, go check out Pandemic. We got the logo finished. It's just my OCD that's delaying it. There was an eyebrow situation yesterday. It was, I think it's, I think it's done, but I haven't, I haven't had the heart to check. <laughs> um, Gmail is absolute trash at, oh geez, I feel like there should be a limit on Gmail email threads. Cause once you get more than like 10 and you get attachments, it's all crazy. Um, so uh, anyway, so go check this out. Uh, we're at 623 backers. I've done kind of like a soft launch. Like I didn't really talk about it that much. I didn't alert like past campaigns because I was waiting to get the finished cover. Should have that uh, today or tomorrow. And then this has nothing to do with this, but probably on a slower news week, I would have gotten a whole video out of this. So I guess there's a upcoming Marvel series by Alex Ross, which I guess he's writing. Marvel, if you didn't have 100 different books, maybe you could concentrate on things that are going to definitely be hits if you would explain what they are. Is it a series? Is it a mini-series? Is it a one-shot? Is Alex Ross doing the covers? Is he doing the interiors? Is he doing the writing? Is he doing everything? Who knows? Um, but what he did that I freaking love is he drew X-Force in the style of Rob Liefeld, Liefeld whatever. So he's got... Rob does this very particular drawing of the, uh, let's call this guy Deathblow, Deadpool uh, mask, um, and nobody else does it for some weird reason. And then his, uh, he drew uh, Alex Ross. I always felt like um, Rob's characters have very like Nordic features, like little button noses. And um, uh, but uh, this is important to me. Cable's supposed to look like late 50s, early 60s, and have a, have this busted hairline. Uh, Rob Liefeld insists that he was always supposed to be like 40, and he just had a rough life. But if you look at, no, no, no matter how rough your life is, you don't look like that when you're 40. Um, uh, so this is this is Cable to me. And this weird thing that, what what is even this thing? It's like this kidney-shaped fanny pack? I, I never knew what it was. It has an irregular shape. Um, and it was just kind of there. It kind of, kind of reminded me like, uh, like the thing in the cartoons, what was it? The Doberman pinchers had like, they have that barrel that hangs from him. Is it Doberman pincher? Whatever. Um, I just imagine he's got like, I don't know, Capri Sun or something like that. Like a little, uh, I don't know, sunglasses. I feel like that'd be a good sunglasses case. Yeah. Yeah. Sunglasses. So uh, anyway, I love this. This has nothing to do with the rest of it. <laughs> um, but there's been a whole... I did a video yesterday, yesterday about how like the world economy might actually be crashing or at least have a world recession and the comic book industry is in real trouble. I mean, Rich Johnston, look at this. Marvel launches new politically correct woke superhero comic to insult longtime readers. And then three years or three, three years, three hours later, an extinction event for comics. Yeah. Somebody, somebody got real serious real fast. So uh, now there's news that's like serious business news. So you got like Vault Comics to delay all titles over coronavirus pandemic. Oh no, how am I going to get issue four of Vagrant Queen? <laughs> Nobody asked that. Um, uh, Aspen has suspended all comics publishing indefinitely due to Corona. You guys put out like one book a month. Um, but this one's more serious. These are like actual publishers with multiple, you know, actually, you know, they got a foothold on the industry. So Eric Stevenson challenged uh, uh, Marvel and DC over coronavirus a couple days ago. And then Marvel responded today. And then Peter Sumetti, he's just angry. Um, so, um, okay, so uh, he says, oh, blah, blah, blah. blah. So flowery. What, what, was, what is your point? Uh, so image says we're now making all new product on final order cutoff for the next 60 days returnable 
and we are prepared to extend that as nece- as necessity dictates. Uh, he's talking about how the stores are in trouble. So the the way the direct market works is you get the catalog and you say all the shill media says Captain Marvel and Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl are the most popular comics out there. You're like, wow, I want to order 50 of each one of those. And then you sell two of each and then you you basically, you, you don't get to do anything. You're just stuck with the other 48 times three of, you know. Uh, so uh, returnability has been a, uh, a huge deal. Um, only a couple companies offer it. But I, I've always said this that, I think I said this like a year or so ago. Returnability would have fixed the entire industry in like three months. Because when you see those numbers on the Vidayala and the mags and all those people who get hired for identity, nobody cares. The, 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 I, they brought back Vagrant Queen. It had 2400 for issue one, asterisk returnable. So people said, eh, whatever, fine. Non- non-returnable issue two, 800 and something. Like nobody wants this. You would see, you know, people like uh, uh, Leia Williams. She's safe. But those Kelly Thompsons who have like one failed book after another, yeah, it would be real obvious. You would not be able to have Vidal on five books if everything was returnable. Because you just you would just lose, you know, all your money if you're a company. So he says, we're canceling non-essential releases like second printings and reprints. We're offering suggestions to Diamond for ways to mitigate the impact of this crisis on retailers threatened by mandatory store closures. And as of yesterday, we are looking at ways to reschedule and stagger the release of our comics, trade paperbacks, and graphic novels so that we're not pumping product into the marketplace at a time when retailers and consumers alike are dealing with financial struggle for an indeterminate amount of time. We do this because we love comics, we love this industry, and we recognize our place in the ecosystem we all uh, rely on to thrive. So basically to encapsulate, they're, we're gonna, they're going to reduce the amount of stuff they're putting out, all the, you know, the trade paperbacks and the reprint. They're like, no, just new product. But they're also making it returnable. And this is, this is huge if you're a comic book store because it basically eliminates the risk. Um, uh, and, and I'm not sure how postage and shipping factors into that, but at least on the books, you can say like, hey, if nobody comes in my store for two months, I get to return all the image stuff. Um, so he cha- he challenged, um, uh, he basically challenged everyone else to do it. Um, says we're the number three with like hint, hint for numbers one and two. With all due respect to our publishing peers, we urge you to enact similar measures that will help our retail partners get through these harrowing times. Everybody at every level of our industry needs to do everything we can to support one another. Let's put our heads together and find ways to protect the people who make what we do possible. I understand that not every publisher is in the position Image is in when it comes to making these decisions. Image is not owned by a large corporation or beholden to stockholders. Regardless, this is key stockholders. Regardless, this is a time when we all have to do our part. I know that for some of you, that means jumping through a lot of hoops but it, oh, blah, okay, blah, blah. So anyway, when he brings up the stockholders, this is key because when you're on the board of directors, movies always act like board of directors gets to do whatever. They're just like evil Illuminati. They, no, no, no. They are, they are in a very precarious situation. Dude, you go out, <laughs> you go out to the bathroom during a board meeting. The rest of the board are like, oh, God, finally. Oh my gosh, finally. They're all wearing Depends. They've been pissing themselves. You know, hey, have some more coffee. Have some more coffee. You go up to the bathroom. They vote you off the board. You have to constantly not only maximize profits, increase profits. That's why when everyone's like, well, uh, Alan Moore's, uh, you know, his contract said that if Watchmen isn't printed for a year, he gets the rights back. Why would you stop printing something? You have to, you, anyone who approved that would be fired either by the board. If they were on the board, they would be voted off. So they can never, ever do that. And Alan was like early 30s. He was old enough to know stuff like this. Um, so uh, uh, Peter Samedi was pretty salty. And he looks like he's been salty for a couple of days. Um, so uh, I'm trying. Boy, I just, just really lost my Twitter chops. I used to be able to find things really quick. Okay, so I, I know that he's up there talking to um, uh, C.B. Sobolski. So uh, Marvel and DC were silent. DC is still silent. Um, and Marvel just responded, but Peter Samedi was not happy with how he did it. So um, 
uh, C.V. Sobolski says, Everyone here at Marvel has been working closely all week with our talent, retailers, distributors, and even fans around the world to make sure that all their differing needs and concerns are heard and addressed in these uncertain times. Um, and then he's, he gives a link to this Bleeding Cool uh, article. It says, uh, Marvel Comics significantly increases comic store discounts to combat effects of coronavirus. So, um, uh, this is really long. Okay, so... For Marvel titles scheduled to go on sale between March 18th and April 8th, Marvel is offering extensive deep discounts adjusted on the top of existing discounts you have in place to help alleviate cash flow pressures and give you the flexibility to sell your product in response to customer demand as needed. And then there's a chart. Uh, so basically, you know, you sell, you buy a uh, Squirrel Girl for $4. Uh, these things vary wildly, but, you know, the, uh, let's say the, store spent two dollars for that um so then they get to get a two dollar profit that's because you know diamond they took their cut marvel took their cut if marvel reduces their cut um which is weird because these are books that are coming out like this week so i guess it would be more like a credit to your account um then you make more money per book the problem is people are locked down in their houses for the next two to three weeks in america and most likely it's going to be uh, uh what do you call it um extended and even if it isn't a lot of these people are not making money for these so you know buying comics is going to be really a low priority for months to come and they basically came up with like a three-week reduction where you know um uh image put out the challenge either you know re returnable or put out less product you know cancel it delay it whatever um, the discount for the smallest stores is up to twice as much as they previously received while the larger stores, it is an additional quarter of their existing discount. These are very sizable discount changes that should make profitability easier for all comic book stores and with a very uncertain future and customer base. Uh, okay, um, so see, uh, Peter Cement has got some words uh, for that. He says, which stores ask for deeper discounts instead of returnability options? So. Uh, this is this response is actually why I made this video because it's manipulative and it bothered me. Peter Smitty, if you go to his Twitter, he's been angry, but this is a very direct, honed, retailer, publisher specific, knowledgeable question. When the challenge was make stuff returnable and people were asking for a returnability and I didn't hear anyone asking for discounts, why is that your offer? And so, first of all, again, this is one of those things if you're new to the internet, you're like, what? he just said his name. This is, this is, if you are in a conversation and someone just randomly uses your name, when you already both know each other's names, it's usually a little power move, even if they don't realize they're doing it. So, uh, Peter just says it, and then uh, C.B. Sobolski responds, Peter, you're a smart guy who understands this. Oh, ooh, I'm, I'm getting angry already. The Peter is to diminish you. Put himself in an authority position the compliment out of nowhere that's not needed this is not no it, it's this is an a to b you know this is very factual numbers dates business this is buttering her up buttering him up is just real it's just condescending and manipulative peter you're a smart guy who understands this business so you know oh geez that's like three separate emotional manipulations so you know this is a difficult time for anyone and everyone works in this industry we all love i haven't been spoken to my face in such a condescending manipulative way in a long 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 time maybe ever and i'm not sure what my reaction would be if 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 a, if a grown man looked me in the eye and tried to manipulate me four different times in one sense i think i would be very very angry um, in this industry we all love, especially retailers and talent, we're taking all situations into account when making any moves. Not all will be public. Um, so Peter Semeti just cooks him. He goes, yep, that's why we offered full returnability plus trade-in options back in February 2019 to limit risk for retailers. And that's on top of having the most affordable price point in the industry. If these are your public moves, I shudder to think at what the private ones look like. So let me see if, um, <laughs> so DJ the Baptist, oh, I'm sorry, you're not supposed to, don't contact anyone, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, the, 
get retailers thoughts on new new warriors <laughs> ah. C.B. Sobolski says, We'll be happy to, after retailers and fans have had a chance to read the actual comic and judge the story for themselves. Nope! 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 First of all, this has been a huge news story. The Critical Drinker covered it. He doesn't, he doesn't cover comics. I, barely ever. I think maybe ever. So if like some super normie, like everyone is bothered for the same way. They're bothered because you obviously are wasting. In a time where comic stores really need product to sell, you uh, approved, um, I'm just going to throw out an estimate, $20,000, $25,000 in expenses just to zing Twitter enemies. <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to call them safe space. That'll piss off the right people. Your job is not to piss off the right people. Your job is to sell comics. And then uh, Peter uh, cooks, uh, he cooks uh, Jim Lee. So uh, I guess Jim Lee's last tweet was on uh, March 12th. And Peter Sametti writes, can someone check on Jim? Is he okay? A week since posting and the industry could use a word from the publisher of DC and one of its creative legends. Very strange times. Image is stepping up, taking a leadership position, making an offer that would be realistically help uh, comic book stores. Alterna, I think it's, it sounds like they even predated uh, Image in a very similar uh, offer. Uh, Marvel has... <laughs> given a different offer that uh, no one seems to really like that much and DC is just, you know, completely silent. Um, so uh, that's where we stand. You happy there? Saying that to my friend who pressured me into it. I, I, I don't understand the retail. I think I, I, I don't think I got that lost here. I think I, I'm okay. I didn't get that far out of my uh, wheelhouse. So let's see if I had any uh, sales uh, while I was talking. I'm very excited about showing the cover. Uh, it's uh, uh, especially with the trade dress on there. It's uh, really cool and the logo and everything. The logo really like hammers home like the concept of the book. So that's cool. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Indiegogo, and the Patreon. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description and I'll have more new and old comic reviews up all this week. Thanks. Bye.